Before we start 6.1 and 6.2, we want to talk about why it's important to restrict the domain of a function. And uh, the examples we're going to use is y equals x squared, y equals sine of x, and y equals cosine of x. All right. Um, we already know what y equals x squared looks like. It looks like this. Something like this. All right. Now, if I do the inverse of this function, the first step is to switch the x and the y. So I'm going to write it as x equals y squared, and then I'm going to solve for y. When I solve for y, I take the square root of both sides, and I get y equals x squared. Uh, y equals square root of x. Now, did I do that right? You should say no, because what I forgot to do is add the plus and minus. And let me go over that real quick with you. Um, if I ask you what uh, x is, if I said the x squared of 64, most of you all would say 8, because 8 squared equals what? 64. However, negative 8 works as well, because negative 8 squared equals 64. Because negative 8 times negative 8, two negatives make a positive. So anytime you take the square root of something, you always have to put the plus and minus. Now I'm going to graph y equals plus or minus root x. Okay, the plus part is here. The minus part is here. Now let's go back to this one here. Uh, y equals x squared. Is this a function? Yes. You can do a vertical line test. Every ha x has one and only one y. However, when we did the inverse of y equals x squared, and we calculated and figured and drew it, when I do the vertical line test, this is clearly not a function. It, every x has more than this x has two y's. This x has two y's. This x has two y's. So we have an inverse, but we don't have a function. The key word is we want a function. How are we, how are we going to do this? So for the let's go back to the first one. The first one, the original domain, is negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so domain is negative infinity to infinity because I can put an, um, an infinite amount of x values to get y. What happens if I restrict the domain? So what I'm going to do is erase this portion right here. I'm going to erase it and restrict my domain to 0 to infinity. When I do that, when I take the inverse, I'm also restricting the negative portion here. So I don't need the negative. All I need here is the positive. And when I do the positive, then I only have the, the, it in quadrant 1. Now I have an inverse function. As long as I restricted my original function here. And that's what we're going to do. And recall that um, for a function to be an inverse, it should reflect over the line y equals x. So I'm going to kind of draw that here. So this is your inverse positive. And this is y equals x squared when it's restricted to only 0 to infinity. So if you did a symmetric test and folded it on this line y equals x, they would match up. Okay, we're gonna now we're gonna get into cosine and sine, or sine and cosine. I took the liberty of drawing sine because I think after the unit test you all know how to draw that. Basically I did my dot 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 here here is my domain, and here is my range. Okay, 
And you recall from the first video, if I want to do the inverse, all I have to do is switch my domain and range. So on the next slide, I'm just going to switch these two here, my X and my Y. So this will be my new domain, this area. This will be my new range. Okay. I drew, I took the liberty again of drawing it. Um, I switched my X and Y here. Here's my X. So therefore my Y would be by just switching it here. So this is pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Clearly, this is not a function. I can do the vertical line test. There's I have several violations here. It's not a function. Infinite number of violations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the first slide, and I'm going to restrict my sine function. Now I want to include zero because zero tells us a lot of information. Um, what I'm going to do, we already know the domain of sine is negative infinity to infinity because this goes on forever. I could draw arrows here. This wave goes on forever. And it's a function. So I'm going to restrict this function, the domain of this function, in order to get an inverse function. And where I'm going to restrict it as at from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So I'm just going to restrict it right in this box area. Okay, so this is the piece I'm looking at. And if you, if you recall, this is in quadrant 4. This part's in quadrant 1. So when I come back to my inverse sign, I'm going to write it as y equals sine inverse of x. I restricted it from uh, pi over 2 to negative pi over 2. Alright? So we're just going to go from negative 1 to 1. And so this would be in this area right here on the table. But I'm no longer going to call this 3 pi over 2. I'm going to call this, let me erase it, negative pi over 2. Because I can't go around on the circle to the other quadrants. I cannot deal with quadrant 2, and I cannot deal with quadrant 3. Only in quadrant 1 and 4. Here we go. Here is both uh, functions together. The red line is our original function. Restrict it from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And that re so when I did the inverse and drew it, the green one is your inverse. Now I have a function. That's what I wanted. I want my inverse sign to be a function and I had to first restrict the domain between let me put it here negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and that's the table you're going to copy down in your textbook Okay. again here's cosine I already know you already know how to draw a cosine you do the little dots and draw it and continue the same here. On the next slide I'm going to switch my X and Y and uh, when I s switch the X and Y I basically drew this part here and then I inferred this part in here. Again, clearly this is not a function. Do the vertical line test. So I'm going to go back to my original slide, and I am going to restrict my domain. We start, this is 0, and this, since this includes a 0 here, I'm going to restrict my domain between 0 and pi. So I'm going to restrict it here. So now, when I restrict my domain, it's going to be between 0 and pi. 
and and when I do that, between zero and pi is from here. So I have one to negative one. That's going to be between here and here. This part right in here is a function. So I'm not going to use this cast off that's not inside this box here. I took the liberty of uh, drawing this. This is in your book. This one's my original. Y equals cosine of X. Restrict it to zero between zero and pi. And this is my inverse function. Um, y equals cosine inverse of X. Okay. Now, I find it helpful when we're going we're gonna to start. I'm going to do a video in 6.1, your uh, pencil problems. I find it helpful to look at um, the restrictions like this. This is Y equals sine inverse of X. This is the only thing we can deal with. This in quadrant 1 and 4. Okay. And for cosine, the inverse, the only domain we're going to be dealing with is between 0 and pi. So these are the tables that you're required to copy down, the, the table 1, 2, and 3. And tan, I'm just going to let you infer the information from that. But when you copy down your tables, these are the values you're copying down right here. Okay. So hopefully this video helped. We'll talk it we will go over this in class as well. Uh the next video coming up is uh, 6.1 penciled problems. So this is uh this these two videos that I did before will help.